everyone. Um, we are here with our last RE lesson of the term. Um, and as you know, we've been learning about Hinduism, haven't we? So let's have a look at our lesson for today. Now, um, so we've been learning about what Hindus believe, haven't we? And I've just put a few pictures on the screen um, of some of the things that we've been learning about this term. So what I'd like you to do is just pause the video for a minute and see how many of things you can remember from our lessons so far using these pictures to help you. Okay, let's see how you got on. Let's see if what you remembered matches anything that I remembered. So I was thinking about how we've been learning about one God um, who has many, many different qualities. And we learned about um, how Hindus have lots of different gods that represent these different qualities. Um, in particular, we learned about the Trimurti, which were the three main functions of Brahman. So he was described as creator, preserver and destroyer. Um, what else? We watched a video, didn't we, where those um, two Hindu children were showing us about the way that they worship those gods. One of the things they mentioned um, was that sometimes a family might have a special god that that family worships. Um, and then down at the bottom is just those two examples of, remember, there were hundreds and hundreds of different Hindu gods. Um, I've put Ganesh, the elephant headed god on there, and Hanuman, the monkey god down there. So hopefully you remembered some of those key facts. Let's have a look at what we're going to be doing today. So I want to have a look at this sentence, which comes from the Hindu holy book. So just like Christians have a Bible as their holy book, the Hindus have a holy book too. And one of the things it says is this, Brahman is the one present everywhere and is the one who is above all. And I've underlined the words present everywhere. So if you're present, that means you're here. So they believe that Brahman is here in the world, in every part of the world and present in everything. Okay. And I wonder how that is possible. How, how is that possible that they can believe that? Um, and I've got a video for you, which hopefully um, will explain a little bit more about those beliefs and particularly about how they, that impacts their lives. Okay, so when you're watching the video, I'd like you to think about um, what do they mention, the, the children in the video, about um, how that belief that Brahman is everywhere affects the way that they live. Let's get to it. Hi, I'm Simran, and this is my brother Raj. Yo, what's up, guys? I'm 14, and my religion is Hinduism. There you go. Yeah. My hobbies are music and photography. Smile. I also love playing with my brother. <laughs> Raj is 11 and his favorite hobby is taekwondo. We're vegetarian. This food looks a bit tasty. It's a big part of being Hindu. We believe God exists in everything. So it's important to respect all living things. Really fun to be vegetarian because all those dishes, they're so tasty and the spices are nice. For dinner, we're having bani puri. Mm -hmm. You dip it in the mint, then you get some um, leaves, and then... And then you give it to your sister to eat. Hindus believe life is a cycle of birth, death and rebirth, and every action we make has an effect, called karma. This means how I live now will impact how I live in my next life on earth. If I'm really good, I hope to be freed from the cycle of rebirth and become one with God. Hindus believe in one God who exists in everything. It's quite confusing. To help us understand names, images and qualities are given to millions of gods and goddesses. This makes it easier for me to think about God and helps me focus during worship. Okay, so hopefully that video gave you a bit more of an idea about um, how that belief affects a Hindu's life day to day. Um, I wonder if you managed to think about anything um, that they mentioned in particular. So for example, um, it mentioned about Hindus being vegetarian. So they, they want to show respect to all living things because they believe that their God is within all those things. And so they would not want to kill animals for meat. 
um, it also talked about um, this cycle of birth, death and rebirth and how Hindus hope to please God. And that doesn't just mean that they believe they might have a better life in their next life, but also that eventually they may break free from that cycle to be completely at one with God. Um, and also um, it talked about karma, which is the idea that every action, everything that you choose to do in life has an effect and will impact um, not just their life in the future, but perhaps their next life as well. So what we're going to be doing is um, looking at a poem, which is from another part of um, the Hindu holy book. And the poem is a kind of an expression of what they believe about Brahman being in everything in the world. Uh, so I'll just read it to you. It says, you are a woman, you are a man, you are the dark blue bee and the green parrot with red eyes. The lightning is your child. You are the seasons of the year and the sea. You are a part of everything. You are everywhere. Everywhere that is, is born of you. And what I thought would be good to do um, would be if we perhaps changed a few of the words to make our own version of the poem. So I've had a go at this already as a little example for you. Um, and the words that I've changed are in green. So I've kept the same structure of the poem because I really like that structure, um, but just changed the idea. So my version says, you are a girl, you are a boy. You are the bright blue dragonfly and the pure white dove. The roaring thunder is your child. You are the vast desert, the dense jungle and the depths of the ocean. You are a part of everything. You are everywhere. Everywhere that is, is born of you. So a lot of it is still the same. I've just changed um, the ideas within the poem. So I've chosen some different animals to include. I've chosen a different um, type of weather to include um, and a few different um, sort of habitats as well. So um, for your silver task, if you choose to do that, could you do similarly to what I did? Could you use that template, that structure to write your own version of that poem? So expressing the idea that God is in everything in nature. Um, or if you're feeling particularly um, expressive, particularly imaginative today, um, feel free to write your own poem. So use your own structure, as long as it expresses that idea of God being everywhere and in everything, um, that that's what we're trying to focus on today. So I hope you enjoy writing your poems and I'm really looking forward to reading some of them later. Okay, have a lovely rest of the day.